This is orchestrated, folks. The globalists are using migration as a tool to disrupt national stability and dilute the cultural and political power of sovereign nations. It's all about control. By flooding countries with mass migration, they destabilize local economies, strain social services, and ultimately weaken the political voice of the native population. This is classic divide and conquer on a global scale. We're seeing the fallout in real time. In the United States, the Biden administration is allowing wave after wave of migrants to enter the country illegally, and the mainstream media doesn't even bat an eye. Why? Because it's part of a much larger agenda, the same one outlined in the 2000 UN report. Jeremiah 51 and 2, the GNT. I will send foreigners to destroy Babylon like a wind that blows straw away. When that day of destruction comes, they will attack from every side and leave the land bare. Double honors and salutations on to Yahweh wa Yahweh Shai, wa the elders and apostles, the water for your diligency and your leadership. You're definitely worthy of the title. Shalom to the 144,000 men the governing body of the kingdom to come that are pushing this word this very hour shalom to the innumerable one-third who are ordained to believe on the names of Yahweh 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 Shah and our truth and sincerity I'm the brother Yazrayala from the GMS Dallas camp coming back at you with another quick hit lesson all right in this late afternoon on Tuesday right before camp all right down here downtown and uh the name of this lesson here I believe is I'm going to call it the UN replacement migration agenda for the NWO. Now, the video is speaking for itself, all right? There is an agenda happening right now before our eyes. And as you can see, the local news stations aren't addressing it. Now, of course, you have some small pockets of people who are seeing this as the beginnings of a huge issue, all right? But it's not getting the worldwide media coverage or attention it should, so the masses don't truly understand what's happening. Right now, mind you, I say worldwide because this is not something that's just happening in the U.S. All right, this replacement migration agenda is global. All right, the U.N. had this written in early 2000. All right, and the plan, the plan basically was for the elites to use mass immigration as a solution to declining and aging populace. All right, and developed nations, chiefly America and other nations around the world, France, Germany, Japan, Italy, all of the EU and even Europe is facing migrant crisis right now, as well as Africa. <laughs> you see, so this is literally a systematic overhaul of an entire population, all right? They're pretty much transforming all nations through something called the demographic engineering agenda, all right? So ultimately the goal is to tear down the borders, right? Blur the cultures in order to create a controlled beast system right so you open the borders what's hap what's what happens what soon ensues crime rates go up political divide right the social fabric is basically being torn right before your eyes all right now keep in mind these migrants aren't desperate people that are fleeing their second and third world countries all right from some certain situation all right this is all being orchestrated remember ord out of ko that's the elite model, okay? Create the chaos and then come in with the order, all right? So we know that this isn't anything new, okay? Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and grab um, Habakkuk hey. 2. And it says, yeah, Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yeah, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home, who enlarges his desire as hell and as, as death, and cannot be satisfied but gathereth unto him all nations and heapeth unto him all people. You see, so this prophecy is the new world in agenda, the NWO agenda happening right now. Our military, our democracy, our policies, our philosophies, they're just not relegated to the U.S. They're all over the world being pushed in every country. You see, this is why Esau is called, is known as the red horse in Revelation 6. All right, when that second seal was opened, all right, to go basically out into the earth and take peace from the earth and hell and death followed it. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and grab it. I'm trying to get more into just pulling the precepts instead of um, paraphrasing them. This is Revelation 6 and 4. 
and there went out another horse that was red. Right, horse is symbolic to what power, right? And it says, and power was given to him that sat there to take peace from the earth and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So who else was described as red and the blessing of sword in the Bible? And with that sword, they were gonna gain fatness of the earth. Did not Isaac bless Esau with that? So the Bible is symbolic, okay? And that lines up with Habakkuk, what we, did, what we just read in Habakkuk two and five, right? He says, is as hell and as death and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heapeth on him all people in his what? His NWO agenda. These people have a God complex, you see? Now, this video I found here actually was sent to me. Um, I can't play the full video as they may very well attempt to give me a strike. So I'm just going to play parts of it here and there and address some of the things that are in the video. And I'll leave the link in the video um, description box for those who want to watch it. All right. And that way you can get it in its entirety. All right. Let's check it out. Order. Look at how this affects us directly. When you bring in this level of migration, it puts immense strain on public resources. Schools are overwhelmed, healthcare systems buckle, crime rates surge, and housing becomes scarce. Meanwhile, the globalists sit back and watch as the middle class is eroded, replaced with a population that's more dependent on government handouts and less likely to push back against authoritarian policies. But it's not just about economics or social strain. There's a deeper, more sinister agenda here. By displacing native populations, the globalists aim to erase national identities. They want a borderless world where people are easier to control, where cultural differences are flattened, and where we all fit into their technocratic vision. This isn't some wild conspiracy theory. It's happening, and the UN Replacement Migration Report laid out the playbook decades ago. And if you think this is limited to the US and Europe, think again. The elites are pushing the same agenda in countries across the globe. Africa, Asia, South America, they're all being set up as pawns in this global chess game. The migrant crisis is just one front in a much larger war for control over populations. Jeremiah 51 and 2, the GNT. I will send foreigners to destroy Babylon like a wind that blows straw away. When that day of destruction comes, they will attack from every side and leave the land bare. Double honors and salutations on to Yahweh, Wah Yahweh Shai, Wah the elders and apostles, the water for your diligency and your leadership. You're definitely worthy of the title. Shalom to the 144,000 men, the governing body of the kingdom to come that are pushing this word. This very hour, Shalom to the innumerable one third, who are ordained to believe on the names of Yahweh, Yahweh Shah, and our truth and sincerity. I'm the brother Yazrayala from the GMS Dallas camp, coming back at you with another quick hit lesson. All right, in this late afternoon on Tuesday, right before camp. All right, down here downtown. And uh, the name of this lesson here, I believe, is I'm going to call it the UN Replacement Migration Agenda for the NWO. Now. The video is speaking for itself, all right? There is an agenda happening right now before our eyes. And as you can see, the local news stations aren't addressing it. Now, of course, you have some small pockets of people who are seeing this as the beginnings of a huge issue, all right? But it's not getting the worldwide media coverage or attention it should. So the masses don't truly understand what's happening. Right now, mind you, I say worldwide because this is not something that's just happening in the U.S., all right? This replacement migration agenda is global. All right, the UN had this written in early 2000. All right, and the plan, the plan basically was for the elites to use mass immigration as a solution to declining and aging populace, all right, and developed nations, chiefly America and other nations around the world, France, Germany, Japan, Italy, all of the EU, and even Europe is facing migrant crisis right now, as well as Africa. <laughs> you see, so this is literally a systematic overhaul of an entire population, all right? They're pretty much transforming all nations through something called the demographic engineering agenda, all right? So ultimately the goal is to tear down the borders, right? Blur the cultures in order to create a controlled beast system, 
right? So you open the borders, what's hap what's, what happens, what soon ensues? Crime rates go up, political divide, right? The social fabric is basically being torn right before your eyes, right? Now keep in mind, these migrants aren't desperate people that are fleeing their second and third world countries, all right, from some certain situation, all right? This is all being orchestrated. Remember, ord ad keo. That's the elite model, okay? Create the chaos and then come in with the order, all right? So we know that this isn't anything new, okay? Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and grab um, Habakkuk hey. 2. And it says, yeah, Habakkuk 2 and 5. Yeah, also because he transgresseth by wine, he is a proud man, neither keepeth at home who enlarges his desire as hell and as, as death, and cannot be satisfied, but gathereth unto him all nations, and heapeth unto him all people. You see, so this prophecy is the New World in agenda, the NWO agenda happening right now. Our military, our democracy, our policies, our philosophies, they're just not relegated to the U.S. They're all over the world being pushed in every country. You see? This is why Esau is called, is known as the red horse in Revelation 6, all right? When that second seal was opened, all right, to go basically out into the earth and take peace from the earth and hell and death followed it. Matter of fact, let me just go ahead and grab it. I'm trying to get more into just pulling the precepts instead of um, paraphrasing them. This is Revelation 6 and 4. And there went out another horse that was red, right? Horses symbolic to what power? Right? And it says, And power was given to him that sat there unto take peace from the earth, and that they should kill one another. And there was given unto him a great sword. So, who else was described as red and the blessing of sword in the Bible? And with that sword, they were going to gain fatness of the earth. Did not Isaac bless Esau with that? So, the Bible is symbolic. Okay? And that lines up with Habakkuk, what we, ju what we just read in Habakkuk 2 and 5. Right? He says, is as hell and as death and cannot be satisfied, but gather unto him all nations and heapeth on him all people in his what? His NWO agenda. These people have a God complex, you see. Now, this video I found here actually was sent to me. Um, I can't play the full video as they may very well attempt to give me a strike. So I'm just going to play parts of it here and there and address some of the things that are in the video. And I'll leave the link in the video um, description box for those who want to watch it, all right? And that way you can get it in its entirety, all right? Let's check it out. Order. Look at how this affects us directly. When you bring in this level of migration, it puts immense strain on public resources. Schools are overwhelmed, healthcare systems buckle, crime rates surge, and housing becomes scarce. Meanwhile, the globalists sit back and watch as the middle class is eroded, replaced with a population that's more dependent on government handouts and less likely to push back against authoritarian policies. But it's not just about economics or social strain. There's a deeper, more sinister agenda here. By displacing native populations, the globalists aim to erase national identities. They want a borderless world where people are easier to control, where cultural differences are flattened, and where we all fit into their technocratic vision. This isn't some wild conspiracy theory. It's happening, and the UN Replacement Migration Report laid out the playbook decades ago. And if you think this is limited to the US and Europe, think again. The elites are pushing the same agenda in countries across the globe. Africa, Asia, South America, they're all being set up as pawns in this global chess game. The migrant crisis is just one front in a much larger war for control over populations. Well, see, there you have it. This is all part of a bigger NWO agenda, all right? This whole migration thing is just a stage to the ultimate goal. All right, and it's happening. Now remember the scripture says that he was the most subtile beast of the field, meaning the earth. All right, he uses gradualism and stages and that's what we see happening. That's what's been happening, all right? And it does not go without distractions, sensationalism, right? News, media, propaganda, all to throw you off his sin to keep you occupied with bread and circus. All the while it's happening right in front of your face. And I believe it was um, Winston Churchill I think after the Second World War, he said after forming the UN, 
let not a good crisis go to waste. I think that's what he said. All right, so they're setting all this up to capitalize on this big time, you see? Because why? Esau has a God complex, all right? And when you search the scriptures, this isn't anything new that he's done, all right? He did the same thing during the Greek empire. Antiochus was the ruling power, right, of the world during that time. I wanna say somewhere around 331, to one, around 168, something like that, all right? And he commanded all the people to be one people, having everyone come under his rule and hegemony. Matter of fact, I'm gonna go ahead and grab that real quick. That's it's very relevant to today. This is first Maccabees one and I'll just get straight to the point and 41. Moreover, King Antiochus wrote to his whole kingdom that all should be one people and everyone should leave his law. So all the heathen agreed according to the commandment of the king, right? So all these nations have agreed to consent onto this beast system. You see, Revelation 17 speaks about that, all right? Where all the nations are coming under Esau's gathering all. Did we bring that up in Habakkuk 2? Gathering all nations and heaping on all, himself all people. I'm going to go ahead and grab this Revelation 17. We we'll start at um, 11. And the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and of the seventh and goeth into perdition. Right. The beast that was, all right, the Roman Empire, right, basically America being that eighth came out of the seven. And the seventh being the Roman Empire. Okay, that's pretty much what that's saying, all right? So, it's pretty much the rebirth of what it's talking about of the ancient Roman Empire, America, all over again, right? Revelation 17 and 12. And the ten horns which thou sawest are ten kings which have received no, received not, received not a kingdom as yet, but receive power as kings one hour with the beast. Now, we've gone over this plenty of times. Other brothers have gone over this plenty of times. All right, so that's one hour is pretty much talking about the setting up of the EU or, or originally the EEC, which is the Economic uh, 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 um, European Community. All right, Second Peter, the third chapter says, one day with the Lord is a thousand years to us. So this is speaking from the terms of the Lord's time period when it says one hour. All right, and how do you figure that out? Really, let's just do simple math. So... There's 24 hours in a day, all right? So you take 1,000 and divide it by 24. What do you get? Roughly 41.6 or 7 something, right? So you just round it to 42, 42 years, you see? So NATO was incepted or came about, what, 1949, 1950? Okay, the European Union, 1958, 59, something like that. So we see the Lord doesn't deal with exact numbers, all right, when dealing with time periods. But nonetheless, that's what this is talking about. Okay, when you actually do the history, because the Bible um, is parallel to secular history. It's just written in parabolic form, as we always say. Now, here's the point, Revelation 17 and 13. These have one mind. Who? These kings. And they shall give their power and strength unto the beast. You see that? So again, they're all in this together. All right? You see? Those ten horns that are talked about in Revelation 17 and 12, okay, those are kingdoms, all right? Horns are parabolic or metaphors for what? Power, okay? So this is Esau, basically the rebirth, right? It said he is, the seven, he, is, he is the eighth, but of the seven. So this is America coming back in, in power, and they did that, what, during the Renaissance era. That's when they came back into power, okay? So back then, they were doing the same thing. All right, and the ancient Roman Empire had what's called vassal states. All right, you had the Suvis, you had the, the uh, uh, what is it, the Luxembourg, the Gettys, and so forth and so on. All right, so they're back again today with vassal states. Okay, and that's NATO. All right, so just to give you some background history on that, but you see how it mirrors or rhymes, should I say. Okay, so back to Revelation 17 and 13. I just wanted to make that point. These have one mind and shall give their power and strength unto the beast. Right, so all of these kings, all of these nations are giving all their power unto the beast. Isn't that not what we see happening? That's what that pact of the future is about. All of the nations coming together under Esau, Edom's hegemony. We know this, uh, 2nd Ezra 6-9 says what? Esau is the end of this world or this age. 
and Jacob is the beginning, letting you know that Esau's in rulership and all the nations are coming under his hegemony right now. All right, they're all in it together. Right, the pact of the future. All right, and that document was just passed. All right, with the UN and, and the WHO, the WHO, right, self-appointed leaders of some privatized corporations. All right, and this just happened like a week or so ago. Right, where all of the, um, they all pretty much met to end U.S. sovereignty. All right, and they're looking to remove national sovereignty from all UN and WHO members and countries, all right, of the world, all right? So in case of whatever they deem to be um, an emergency, quote unquote, <laughs> all right, they can just do whatever they want, all right, with no pushback, okay? Now, a lot of brothers did lessons on this, so I'm not gonna go all into it, but I believe that that pact of the future is in two parts. I think one deals with um, science and technology, the other one deals with youth and future generation. All right, now, and mind you, this procedure and how it was passed was, was wicked, but this again speaks to how this man moves. It was something called the silence procedure, meaning that no one was there to object. So while everyone was tuned in to Sean Johnson and Johnson circus, <laughs> right? It was adapted into law, which is ironic because this is the same procedure he used in 1913 to set up the Federal Reserve banking system. I think it was the De December 20. 2nd, 23rd, something like that, when all the members of the Congress were at home with their, uh, for their family, with their families, right, for the holidays, they secretly voted in the Federal Reserve Act, all right, because they were, I think there were like maybe three or four House members that were still there, all right, so it was pretty much still in session, and because they didn't have anyone there to object against it, now Federal Reserve Act was put into, into play. Now we no longer have that, and that was, that was, that was the begin, beginning of the end of America, giving these people control over your money. Give me control over one's money and I care not who makes its laws. Isn't that, that, wasn't that, isn't that what the Rothschild said? You see? One of the biggest, coldest things that these people have, or have had, I should say, is secrecy. That's been their biggest power. Psalm 64 and 5. I'm grabbing this in NLT. They encourage each other to do evil. They plan how to set their traps in secret. Who will ever notice, they ask. As they plot their crimes, they say, we have devised a perfect plan. Yes, the human heart and mind is cunning. Right, so 193 nations, including America, have agreed to this Pact of the Future NWO document. All right, I believe it's uh, the power structure to fully digitize and maximize the control of the masses, what they call it, through biometrics, right? Digital IDs that marks everyone or every global citizen. So, you know, this is just not just national. This is global. All right, anyone with uh, uh, dissonance or an opinion, all right, will be labeled as misinformation, fact checked, punished by the system operated and controlled by AI. If convicted, you <laughs> you can uh, be locked out of your bank account, right? Unable to make purchases, and we know the CBDC, right, which we know to be the MOTB, is programmable coupons. That's what this is. So when they program it, they can lock you out of it. You'll be unable to travel, in prison, and ultimately put to death. All right, so all these three decrees or legislative decrees, draconian decrees, I might add, fall under what I like to call the three pillars of the NWO. Digital IDs, CBDCs, right, which is digital programmable money, and ESG, and uh, environmental surveillance governance. All right, but in order to make the masses want this, right, they need a boogeyman, right? They need something or someone to put fear in the people. You see in Exodus 23, matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and grab that real quick. Exodus 23 and 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, neither shalt thou speak to cause to decline after many to wrestle judgment. Right, so all these nations have followed suit, right, with America's agenda, all right? They have all committed fornication with her, pursuant to Revelations 18 and 3 as the agenda uh, 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 brings more and more of civil unrest and chaos, okay. all right, will soon ensue as these things kick forward. Of course, this motherfucker's gonna sit right in front of me while I'm doing a lesson okay. with his goddamn dog. These fucking heathens, man, I swear. All right? But anyway, um, as this thing moves further, further and further, all right, and all these different skirmishes and things and looting and stuff getting ready are, are happening and, and increase, 
right? The people are going to want a solution. And they're going to come with the solution. The solution's already been prepared. It was prepared years ago. And that's the MOTB, all right? Which ultimately is an illusion of peace and safety, which we like to call it, right? Because anyone following this man's agenda is on that wide path that's going to lead them to destruction, all right? And the thing is, all these migrants, all right, with all of them here, the crime is rising, you know, looting, theft, right, break-ins, people are going to beg for resolution. You see? This is, <laughs> this is evil genius. So these are all done in steps. Right? Let's get a little bit more of this video. What's the end game here? Look around you. This mass immigration is about engineering chaos. Governments and elites know that such drastic demographic shifts lead to tension, social fragmentation, and a loss of national cohesion. And in the chaos, they expand their power. This is when they implement surveillance systems, digital IDs, and global governance structures. It's all connected, folks. The crisis creates the need for solutions, and those solutions are always about controlling us more. The current migrant crisis isn't a humanitarian emergency. It's a calculated move. Governments like the U.S. and nations across Europe are being flooded with migrants in a move that's been telegraphed by the U.N. for years. And that's correct. It's all connected, 100%. All right, and the end game is what? All roads lead to the MOTB. All right, so we're entering what's called a technocracy or techno-tyranny, all right? And it will not come without mass chaos, looting, pillaging, death, bloodshed, destruction. Right? And the scriptures speak about this. Matter of fact, let's grab the second Ezra, the 15th chapter. I'm going to grab this in the GNT. And this is um, 15 from 14 to 19. The world and the people in it are doomed. The war that will bring their destruction is very near. Right, it's happening right now. Nations arm themselves and fight against one another. There will be great political turmoil with one group trying to overpower another and to gain control. While ignoring the legitimate government, there will be no longer free access to cities. You see that? And that's what we're stepping into right now because with this migrant situation here, it's going to bring uproars of the people. It's going to be citizens fighting against each other. A civil war, civil unrest. Right? Along with the political turmoil that we see happening right now. Right? And ignoring the legitimate government, law enforcement. You see? And no longer free access to cities, meaning what? FEMA camps are going to, uh, 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 martial law is going to be instituted. Right? This is what's happening right now. See, this migrant situation is a scapegoat. All right, because martial law must happen. All these things must happen to break us as a people. Or should I say you, because the men of the Lord, we're under witness protection. Abaratazah, we're part of that number, right? So this whole migrant situation, as I said, is a scapegoat and a way they're going to use to set up this martial law by, with these immigrations or these migrants in here. All right. The first precept I brought out was what? Jeremiah 51. I will send fanners into Babylon and they shall f and fan fanners are what? To flame a fire, to flame chaos, anarchy. Right. This Trump rally that just passed, he announced what? That he's going to allow law enforcement one day, a one day purge to lower crime rates. <laughs> yeah. A one day purge. He's talking about allowing law enforcement. All right. So you so-called Negroes, you so-called Latinos. All right. Well, ultimately, this is going to affect all citizens globally, but they're using this. These migrants, these migrants, where they, all these are, are um, come from South America, right? The majority of these are Israelites, but they're going to use this situation, right? To create an uproar. They're already, they've come in, they've what? They've given them money, they've given them financial aid, they've given them housing, cars. All of our taxpayer money has gone to them. You think these Edomites ain't pissed? And now with this looting and all this stuff that's getting ready to really be pushed forward as this, as we approach closer and closer to the um, the presidential election, <laughs> right? 
me going, this is 15 and 18. Because the struggle for power will bring destruction, terror, and total confusion wherever people live. Driven by famine and terrible suffering, people will assault their neighbors and mercilessly plunder their possessions. Right. And when you read it in the KJV, it says all of this is happening also as well for the famine, meaning the lack of food and bread. You see, so ultimately this agenda is going as planned. All right. What happened today? All right. There was a deadline. All right. With the um, supply chain issue. All right. The strike at the ports. Right now, we know that whenever a national emergency is kicked off, what happens? What control and authority of America does it go to? Or should I say, who gets control and authority over America? It's policies, it's, it's, it's regulations, and so forth and so on. It's FEMA. You see? So by taking over the supply chain, they're able to control and regulate and ration food and supplies to the American people. There was a video that one of the brothers put up in the chat today and they were someone was at like video footage and you see the military is now taking over the port. <laughs> it's happening right now. You see? All these crises or so-called crises are going to bend the masses to their will. You see? And it's all going to lead to what? Revelation 13, 16. And he causeth all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. Right. You see? That scripture is speaking loud and clear. Basically, they're destroying this old system that we live in. Physical cash, land ownership, borders, legislation, national sovereignty, and of course the U.S. Constitution because this can't be implemented without destroying that. And in turn, they're rebuilding a new integrated digital system where if you want to be a part of it, you want to live in peace and safety, you'll have to take that chiragma, that sea hip. You'll have to bow, bend a knee to Baal. You're going to have to basically... It's a badge of servitude. You're basically going to have to align yourself with the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan, Esau, Edom, on the Lord's return. You see? So, <laughs> and he causes all rich and poor, free and bond to receive that mark, right? Giving up all your rights, submitting, complying, right? To bring you back to that peace and safety. This is what's happening right now. So this migrant situation was planned. And it's not just happening here in America. They need an overthrow. They have the solution already. They're just waiting for this thing to be, to grow into a big problem. So they're fanning these flames in hopes that they ignite. And you people out here start to lose it so they can come in with it. They're already taking control of the ports, as we see. And I gotta do a little bit more research on that, but from what we see so far, see, so they got control of food, supplies, they got the immigrants coming here, they're giving them all of this financial aid, housing, cars, taxpayers' money. You see? And now they're trying to do away with the U.S. Constitution. They just passed this Pact for the Future bill in secrecy. It's passed. This is part of the agenda. So this is why these migrants are here and in all these other countries that are out here. Hey, so... I'm going to let this last video play and uh, <laughs> it's time to wake up, all right? And call Hello Yahab Hashem Yahabashah that he is moving. He's hearing our prayers and our ball, our Baba ball, destroy this place. The Replacement Migration Report is the roadmap and what we're witnessing now is the execution of that plan. This is why we see globalist organizations like the World Economic Forum pushing for open borders, digital tracking, and increased surveillance. They're paving the way for global control, where national sovereignty is eroded, and we are all just data points in a technocratic system. And this crisis isn't just a byproduct of economic or social policies. 
It's by design. The UN's Replacement Migration Report laid out the blueprint for how mass migration could be used to reshape populations and cement global control. Today, as borders crumble and migrants flood into nations by the millions, the true nature of this plan is becoming more obvious. The elites are creating the problem, and their solution is more control over every aspect of our lives.